Let me start off with the scariest moment of my life so far, right after I turned in my last final for undergrad. I was up all night on Adderall and my brain was fried, but still, for the first time in four years, I thought about the fact that I majored in film theory and I had zero access to well-paying jobs in the middle of the Great Recession. This was 2010. Even my engineering friends were struggling to find work and of course, I had a mountain of debt waiting for me with monthly payments higher than any rent. Do you guys know what that feels like? Overwhelming debt at such a young age? It's like your life is no longer yours. It's like every dream you've ever had suddenly evaporated and your only mission in life is to figure out a way to make those payments. We've all heard the insane statistics about millennials in debt. Two thirds of us already have at least one source of long-term debt. Half of us carry balances on our credit cards month to month on top of the long-term debt. All of us are struggling to make these payments with historically low and stagnant wages. All of this is unprecedented for a generation in their 20s. And we've all heard about the causes, right? There's an entire global financial system that depends on debt that is trickling down to us. There's an unexplainable rise in the cost of higher education that probably shouldn't have happened and people are struggling to understand. And yes, a chain of government decisions and regulations that have made the problem worse and shouldn't have happened either, but I'm not here to talk about any of that. At the end of the day, if we wait around for an external solution coming from any of those systems, we're just gonna throw away the most important decade of our lives. My saying, whether or not this is your fault, you have to figure out a solution for your own. But you know what? If all of us do that together, we can fix this mess without anybody's help. Every adversity is a huge blessing in disguise. This has to be the same. There has to be a way to look at this where debt is the best thing that could have ever happened to us at this time. Maybe it's gonna help us build happier adult lives. Now, I know exactly what you're thinking right now. He's calling himself a millennial and he graduated in 2010. Is he 30? First of all, I'm not 30. I'm 31. <laughs> Secondly, age shaming karma slaps you hard, so you better be careful. You're gonna be 30 in five seconds. Most importantly, there's a completely logical explanation for all this. I'm part of the first batch of millennials, late 80s, and you're part of the last, late 90s. I know that's not enough. Let me walk you through my millennial credentials real quick. I eat an avocado every morning. <laughs> Number two, I have quit five jobs in seven years, and after quitting each one, I took a long solo trip to go find myself. Argentina, Croatia, Ireland, beautiful Instagram moments. <laughs> Number three, I have a podcast and a blog and an email subscriber list and an app I'm building on the side. They've all been growing consistently for the past two years. Number four, I'm standing on this stage humble bragging instead of getting to the point of my talk. <laughs> Number five, I am an openly gay bro, equally comfortable in girls and guys night. I walk around listening to college football podcasts. I come home to watch Real Housewives. That's my Tinder profile. It's about 80% true. Now, here's the one I'm the most proud of. Guess what I did after the lowest point of my life, the one I just told you about. I went into more debt, doubled it within three months. Listen to how delusional I was. I was having trouble getting hired in the entertainment industry in Los Angeles in the Great Recession. So I somehow convinced myself that I'll have an easier time if I just go to New York because it's a smaller entertainment industry and there's fewer people trying to get into it, right? So I tell myself, I'll just move. I'll get an apartment. I'll meet my boyfriend. I'll find the job of my dreams. I'll just manifest it. And all I have to do is swipe it on my credit cards. This is what happens when you blindly follow Instagram quotes about life wisdom. Go after what you want. Don't give in to fear, give in to faith. Picture me, three months later, in the lobby of the Waldorf Astoria, sobbing on the ground because I ran out of money. Nothing to eat, nothing to pay rent, nothing to dry clean my suits to go to more job interviews, nothing to fly home to my parents. And I got the third call in a row telling me I didn't get the job. If you guys are ever gonna have a public meltdown, don't do it in New York City. <laughs> Nobody asked me what was going on, they just kicked me out of the hotel. I'm literally thrown on the street on the lowest point of my life. This one is lower. 
and I look at my phone, and there's a voicemail just waiting there for me. I somehow missed the call. I play it. It's my boss's boss from my former student job on campus. She says, Kristen, your boss just resigned. If you're interested in moving back to Los Angeles, the job is yours. The salary was 40% higher than what I was expecting. And guess what I did? Called back to turn it down. It's not what I want to do with my life. I don't want to work in alumni relations. I want to work in film. I don't go, I go after what I want. I don't settle. I take risks. Thank God I didn't get through to her. She called on a Friday evening. I had until Monday to think it over, and serendipity stepped in to save my ass. I finally met a guy. We went on a date. I told him what I was about to do, and he slapped some sense into me. I will never forget what he said. You know what your problem is? You think you're supposed to build your dreams in your day job. That's not how it works. I've read many success stories. They all did it in their free time. This had never occurred to me before. When I was in high school, my rallying cry was that I was going to study film to avoid a life where I had to stare at spreadsheets all day. And I was saved from doom by a job where I had to stare at spreadsheets all day. <laughs> this job involved things like segmenting alumni data, loading it into a call center software, looking for integration bugs, and reporting them to programmers. I was qualified to do none of this. I was a film kid. I didn't touch things like numbers or statistics or technology with a 10-foot pole. As I'm sitting there on my first week on the job, reading the instruction manual, the only thing I can think of is, how, how do I get away from this? This isn't good for me. I don't want this. I'm not interested in this. But that's where death saved me. I couldn't walk away. When any situation becomes life or death, a human being always figures it out. And I did. I figured it out. I discovered a tool that had been sitting in my pocket the entire time. It gave me the ability to take control of my finances and my career and build my own dreams on the side. Lynda.com, the Netflix of online tutorials. One tiny monthly membership gives you unlimited access to a sea of online courses on any software on the planet. First, it was Excel spreadsheets. Then it was graphic design. Then it was front-end development. Then basic predictive models then video and audio engineering. I became an expert in none, but competent in all. And my life changed when I was competent in all. For starters, I discovered a door that sat in the back of my brain that I shut close all the way back in middle school because I hated math class at the time. All these interests and passions and ideas that I never even knew I had came flying out. And I guarantee you, I never would have opened that door if it hadn't been for all that debt. The rest is history. Five jobs in seven years, big raises after quitting each one, the ability to take huge chunks of my debt down every single year, and the opportunity to rethink what I want to accomplish with my life and what, I, what kind of work makes me happy. Things that I thought were clear on graduation day but actually were anything but. Wait a second. I think I just heard every adult in the room scoff at me right now. Millennial job hopper. I bet you he quit all those jobs because he didn't get a participation trophy. <laughs> Have you guys seen that famous millennials interview? Simon Sinek? I'll tell you the problem with millennials today. They're addicted to their phones. They can't connect with other human beings. They keep switching jobs because they were sold on this word impact and they don't know what it means. They think they can have something just because they want it. It's easy to do that, isn't it? Watch a younger generation, see them behave differently, and automatically think it's worse from your behavior at that age just because it was your behavior at that age. Not one second challenging yourself to think whether the new behavior might be better or healthier in the long run. Do you know what I think about when I think of Simon's generation or my parents' generation? The state of the world today. <laughs> a generation that was forced to make permanent life decisions in their 20s because they were told to. Marrying because it's what everybody did. Committing entire decades to careers that they half-heartedly chose because nothing forced them to question whether it was what they actually wanted. Signing on to mortgages and having children by the time they were my age because if they didn't, people would point at them and say, you're not doing life right. And where did that lead them? Today, most are divorced. Most regret their career choices, their words and surveys, not mine. Maybe, maybe, Maybe 
because these two sides of their lives were broken, they projected their entire pursuit of happiness into consumerism, riding three back-to-back -back waves of fake economic prosperity on a massive credit card and handing us the bill. Isn't it ironic? Today they shake their heads because we're not married yet, or found permanent careers yet, or bought homes yet. Is that where that leads me? Because if it is, I'll stick with my debt. Simon says, it's sad that we were sold this word impact and don't know what it means. I think it's sad that they were sold this word stability and sacrificed everything to protect it and still don't know what it means. They think stability equals happiness. In their universe, a career is not a sacred contribution to the collective good. It's a necessary evil, something to be endured so you can hold your spot in the middle class and find your happiness spending. And what about us? We get to learn to see money differently at a younger age because we have to. We get to spend more time exploring our career interests and our objectives because we have to. And we get to paint different images of success that have nothing to do with the accumulation of wealth because we literally have no other choice. Debt is helping us build happier lives. Listen, the 21st century will not be known for the word stability. The only thing we have to navigate this jungle is technology skills. Look around you. Technology just infiltrated every single industry over the past 10 years. Every job today interacts with things like cloud databases and data analytics and cybersecurity and soon artificial intelligence. <sighs> Give me any job outside of the traditional tech industry and I'm gonna show you a job with an employer who's desperate for somebody who can do the job but is also competent with technology as a builder and as a fixer. I don't care if it's a cattle ranch, government agency, nonprofit organization, or a restaurant. From here on out, employees who know technology will rise faster, be involved in the most important decisions, and always be the hardest to replace. Now think about it. If every good job is now a high-tech job, and technology continues to change and evolve at the rate that it has, then every job is at risk of disappearing or changing beyond recognition every five years from here on out. We're gonna see this repeatedly. Industries will go away, professions will disappear into thin air, and entire chunks of the population will be forced to reinvent themselves over and over and over again. We're about to lose a third of our jobs to automation. And now that we're all interconnected, there's about 10 million people who could do your job. They don't have to move, they can work remotely, they will take less money, and they will win if they know technology better than you. Lifelong learning, especially when it comes to technology skills, isn't just good advice. It is mandatory for everyone in our generation. Simon says that this thing is gonna destroy us. I think it's gonna save us. It's all in how you use it. Are you sitting in the toilet? Put away Candy Crush, pull out an ebook about the future of your industry. Are you doing dishes or laundry? Trust me, audiobooks. Information sticks to your brain like a magnet when you're listening and doing something else. Are you looking for a binge? Swap out Netflix for lynda.com or Coursera or Yami or any of these other sites. lynda.com and chill. <laughs> Bottom line, our parents come from a world that ran on capital and the power it gave to those who had it. Our world is very different. Our world runs on skills and the power it gives to those who constantly refresh them. This is the only bank account that matters now. Forget about your debt. Keep this account in good standing and it won't matter if you're fired. It won't matter if you start a company and fail. It won't matter if you get caught up in another market crash and trust me, another one's coming. You will always have everything you need to dig yourself out of a hole. Don't shoot yourself in the foot by thinking you're not smart enough to figure out technology. Everybody is, trust me. And don't think that what I'm saying is go around hopping jobs and getting raises and adding zero value. No, what I'm saying is that paying off your debt and continuing to acquire more skills and exploring as much as possible and building your own projects on the side should be your only priority, not stability. And don't think for a second, this doesn't apply to me. My situation's unique. 
my job is always going to be there. No, trust me, it applies to you, even non-millennials. But I've honestly never given you better news. We're going to have exciting lives. We're going to do what we love, and we're going to do it in a million different ways. And we're going to show Simon that we can have impact just because we want it. Take a pledge with me today. 11 weeks. Delete all your gaming and social media and online streaming apps from your phone. You'll reinstall them at the end. Don't freak out. <laughs> Replace them with online courses and ebooks and audiobooks and educational podcasts. If you don't come out of this challenge completely hooked on learning, attracting additional sources of income like a magnet, and no longer depressed about the future of the world because you suddenly have the ability to do something about it, I have horrible news for you. You might not be a millennial. Thank you.